couple of months ago, we held a poll on YouTube to see what people thought of the new DJI gimbal, the OM5. 20% loved it, 31% were underwhelmed, but a whopping 48% of you asked, when will we get a heavy-duty, dedicated smartphone gimbal? So if we have a larger phone and we want to add a case, lenses and filters. Until now, our only choice was to get a hybrid gimbal designed to be used with regular cameras and smartphones as well. Problem is they tend to be a bit expensive and a bit fiddly to set up. There was simply no dedicated smartphone gimbal designed specifically for this purpose. Until now. This is the Xion Smooth 5. Can it handle a big phone with extras? Yes. Is it everything we could ask for in a gimbal for smartphone filmmakers? Eh, almost. Well, let's take a look. Many of us have bigger, heavier smartphones. I have two of the heaviest, an iPhone 12 Pro Max and a Samsung Note 20 Ultra. Plus, I often like to add filters and lenses, which makes them even heavier. So the design feels pretty solid and well made. At the same time, it still looks pretty simple and it has the regular smartphone clamp. Mounting a smartphone is so much easier than with the hybrid gimbal like the Xion Crane M2. Xion says the Smooth 5 comes with magnetic steel motors which have upgraded algorithms for smoother performance and also that the clamp for the phone is wider. So we've had some conflicting reports on the max payload of this gimbal. I've seen one YouTuber say 280 grams, another said 360 grams, but actually the Xion manual says 300 grams. So if you have a big phone, case, lens and filter, you're probably going to be going over 300 grams. But with the balancing mechanism on this gimbal, I believe we can get away with going over that 300 gram limit. Straight away, we can see this looks like a real filmmaker's tool. The Smooth 5 is quite a big gimbal compared to fold-up devices like the DJI OM5 or the Smooth Q3, as we would expect. Each motor needs unlocking. The pan-axis motor has a lock switch, which you need to flick across before powering on. The other two need twisting to unlock, and they just click open easily. There's two options when you buy, the basic gimbal and the combo option. With the combo option, you get this carry case and you get also this magnetic fill light with magnetic colored filters. However, there is a $50 extra cost and in the UK, it's a 50 pounds extra cost, which is equivalent to about $70. One distinctive feature of the Smooth 4 was this wheel at the side, which allows you to zoom or pull focus. So they've kept this for the Smooth 5, which is great for more serious filmmaking. You also get lots more controls on the handle, including a mode button. So let's see if it can handle my iPhone 12 Pro Max with a moment thin case and an anamorphic lens, as well as a variable ND filter. When you're mounting a heavy phone with extras, the big problem is that the weight is all at one end. But with the Smooth 5's adjustable arm, we should be able to move the weight towards the middle and balance it out. This is actually how the Crane M2 balances as well. Except with the Crane M2, I wasn't able to move the arm far enough to compensate for the weight at one end. So I had to customize it a bit to get it to work. But with the Smooth 5, I am able to move the arm far enough. There's also numbered marks on the arm to make it easier to move it to the right position when you're rebalancing for different setups. You can also adjust the balance vertically as well by just sliding up and down. And when I power it on, it seems to handle the weight just fine. But I'm going to give it a proper test and see if I have any problems with the weight. One problem we can have when using a gimbal is when we're using a wider angle lens than the main camera. Sometimes the roll axis motor will end up in shot. But with the Smooth 5, the motor that would normally be a problem 
is placed at the back. Meanwhile, the mounting clamp is pressed up against the phone, which is out of shot as well. So that does mean that the arm might partially obstruct our view of the phone screen at certain angles. But this is definitely the better option, because there's nothing worse than shooting a bunch of stuff only to find the gimbal motor in shot, meaning you then have to crop out the gimbal and lose part of your frame. So I tested the gimbal with an anamorphic adapter, as well as the iPhone 12 Pro Max's ultra-wide camera, and the gimbal was never in shot at any time. So my iPhone 12 Pro Max with the moment case fits in the clamp no problem. But as it has this angle in the teeth of the clamp, it does tend to scrunch up the case a bit, mainly because the iPhone has square edges and this case is the thin version. But I tried with a thicker case and that worked fine. So note that you can only push the phone in so far as it presses up against the tilt axis motor. And that's why we need to be able to adjust the arm for balancing. One small downside of this is you cannot connect a microphone via the charging port at the end of your phone. And we can't turn the phone around as then the camera will be obscured by the arm. However, Zhuan has suggested that we could try pulling the phone away from the side of the clamp. And I think this would be fine if we're using the gimbal without lenses and filters. But with the extra weight at the end and then moved even further away from the fulcrum, there might be some issues. Fulcrum, that's a good word, isn't it? I don't know if you call that a fulcrum. If you're an engineer, let us know in the comments. The way the gimbal is designed, you cannot simply switch from portrait to landscape at the press of a button. The phone needs to be mounted differently for each, which means it'll take you a minute or so to change, because you'll have to power off the gimbal, remove the phone, switch between orientation, remount the phone, and then power on again. That said, I found you can easily get a portrait shot just by turning your wrist 90 degrees. It seems to be designed to do that as it kind of clicks into place. You probably wouldn't be too comfortable holding it that way for long, but if you just need a quick portrait shot, it's easy. Another 90 degree twist and the gimbal goes into underslung mode for those ground level shots. The new thing with gimbals these days seems to be the addition of a fill light. The Smooth Q3 came with one which you can rotate. The Smooth 5 combo set comes with a detachable magnetic fill light. You can mount it face forwards or backwards. There's also different colored filters. Seems to me that this would also add to the weight the motors have to cope with, well, a little bit. Plus they also drain the battery of the gimbal faster. The Xeon Smooth 5 will last up to 12 hours on a full charge, but that would be reduced to about four and a half hours if you were using the fill light the whole time. And charging time for the battery is only about two hours. The great thing about this gimbal is that the motors have a pretty good range. The tilt motor can move up to 309 degrees, roll is 300 degrees, and pan does the full 360 degrees. And that's great for those crane shots with the gimbal on an extension arm, like this monopod. Because with the DJI OM3, 4 and 5, you have to do a sideways crane shot due to the limited tilt axis. But with the Smooth 5, you can make a forwards motion, which is easier to control and the movement is maybe more useful as well. Use the Focus Zoom control wheel your smartphone needs to be running the ZY Cami app. Just turn the wheel to adjust. And I do like the feel of this control wheel. It feels pretty solid and it makes getting smooth focus pulls very easy. To switch between focus and zoom, there's this button inside the wheel. The Smooth 5 has all the modes we're used to in a gimbal and having a mode button on the handle makes it very easy to change modes. And this also means that you can use your native camera app on the phone and still change modes. With one of the DJI OM gimbals, for example, 
you need to use the Mimo app to change modes, so that's one major advantage the Xeon gimbals have, which includes the Smooth 5. When we change modes, we can see the mode indicated in this row of lights above, and these also indicate the battery level. To do that, when the gimbal is powered on, tap the button once, and then you get a number of flashing lights depending on the battery level. So not only does the Smooth 5 have this wheel on the side, there's also another control wheel on the front, called the Adjustment Wheel. Again, this works if you're using the ZY Kami app. You can use this to change filming mode by rotating it. You can also press it for various settings, one for each side, up, down, left and right. Double press to open up various settings. Up is for frame rate and resolution. Then single tap up and down, left and right to adjust a setting or to navigate around the app. There's also a button in the middle of the wheel. Press and hold this button to power on the fill light. Single press is like an enter button for confirming a setting, while double press makes this a shutter or record button. I'm not really sure why we would need that, considering there's a dedicated shutter record button. Anyway, a double tap down opens up the ZY Kami app gallery to view pics and videos. The dedicated shutter record button has two functions. So a single tap takes a picture or starts recording. A double tap switches between front and rear cameras in the ZY Kami app. As with other gimbals, the Xeon Smooth 5 has a trigger at the front of the handle. So a single press enables or disables Smart Follow in the ZY Kami app, which is useful if you want to quickly lock onto an object and have the gimbal keep it centered in the frame. Double pressing the trigger repositions the smartphone so it's centered again. Meanwhile, a triple press rotates the smartphone 180 degrees. I think this is a pretty cool feature, as it allows you to film yourself with the better quality main camera. Of course, you won't be able to monitor yourself. And this means it does take some guesswork. Either that or you'll need some other kind of setup. For example, you could use an Apple Watch to monitor your iPhone. Finally, press and hold the trigger to enter Go mode. In Go mode, the roll motor is locked while the tilt and pan motors become more responsive. So that's pretty similar to sport mode in the DJI gimbals. So if you have quick action to follow, use go mode. The gimbal modes are pretty standard for a Xeon device these days. There's pan follow mode, lock mode, follow mode, POV mode, and V for vortex mode. These are all accessed via the mode button on the handle or within the ZY Kami app. Here's another little feature of this gimbal which is pretty cool. When you're in pan follow mode or lock mode, you're able to manually reposition the angle of the smartphone a certain amount. Adjust with your hand and just hold for two seconds and the smartphone will now be fixed at that angle after you let go. The joystick simply lets you maneuver the gimbal manually. You can control pan, tilt and roll as long as you're in the right mode. And sometimes these gimbal control sticks are touch sensitive and sometimes they aren't. If it is touch sensitive, the gimbal will move slower or faster depending on how far you push the stick. I found that with the Smooth 5, the movement is touch sensitive. This is just really a small thing, but it's nice to be able to vary the speed with the joystick. So there has been some suggestions that this gimbal is supported by the Filmic Pro camera app, but it's actually not currently supported as you would expect from a new gimbal, which is just out. So I've actually contacted Jun and they've said that they're working with Filmic Pro to develop uh, integration with the Filmic Pro app. I also uh, reached out to Filmic Pro and they said, yep, yeah, they are definitely working on it, but they've said that there's no definite date when this is going to be ready. So if you're buying this gimbal right now and you're expecting it to be supported by Filmic Pro right away, you're going to be disappointed. But if you hang on, I'm sure that in the next few months, it is going to be supported. So if you want to learn more about smartphone filmmaking, you can join us on Patreon. There's all kinds of downloads there, as well as episodes of our Silent Eye series. We've got a 170 page ebook about smartphone filmmaking, covering every single subject that I could think of. And there's a uh, my special film look guide. And very soon there's going to be another guide to download, which will be how to color grade your smartphone videos. So this is a really nice gimbal. Uh, I'd definitely give it 8 out of 10 and I recommend this one, especially if you're looking for something which is going to handle that extra weight. There isn't really anything else like this now on the market. So 
uh, yeah, what do you think? Anyway, that's it for this video. And uh, if you found it useful, let me know by giving it a thumbs up. And I'll see you in the next video. Ciao. I don't know why I saluted. Why am I saluting?